did a complete split of two double brood boxes. We took, we didn't bother trying to find the queen. We, we just, assumed the queen yes. may be in the bottom. We, it may be, or she may be in the top, but it, it's not really all that relevant because what we'll do in a week's time, we check both of them. Yes. And if there are queen cells in one, we know that they have made uh, a, a queen. So uh, there should be eggs and uh, young larvae and, and, and both, in and both. both so that the bees can kind of make another queen. So we're fairly confident that there was, there was at least eight, nine of ten yes. frames of brood in each, yes. in each brood box. Yes, yes. They were... Full with bees, uh -huh. full with bees. The super was extremely heavy. So we've put the super on the uh, split that we have removed from the foraging bees because the foraging bees will still feed this one. Come this one, yes. Yes, but we've also given it one and a half litre of thin syrup to kind of uh, encourage the bees to think uh -huh. there's still a nectar flow uh -huh. on so the queen keeps on laying uh -huh. fast. Is, uh, is there anything we could have done better? No. I don't think so. No, no. We didn't even fall over a crown board. <laughs> <laughs> is that a cunning plan? One of the most important things in doing a split is planning and having the right equipment at hand. This particular hive was overwintered on a brood and a half and we took the decision early in May because of its viability and because of the way it was expanding and the adjacent rape field that uh, it was going to develop quick. So we inserted a full brood box of undrawn comb underneath the super. We chased the queen down, potentially she could have been in the super. We chased her down into the fresh brood box, uh, put a queen excluder on and put the super back on to start developing. When we came back to the hive after three weeks, we weren't surprised that the Queen and her workers had did their job proficiently. We found both brood boxes full to the brim of eggs. The new brood box that we had inserted was nearly fully drawn and we were ready to split. The split was successful. Now we had to leave well alone. We knew the original hive was well provisioned with foraging bees and the new hive had many house bees and emerging bees so we had to leave alone for one week for everything to develop after one week we came back to try and find the queen so we looked for evidence we had to look in both hives for eggs and queen cells we subsequently found queen cells quite a few in one of the hives so we knew that was a queenless colony and they developed queen cells appropriately. We knocked all down bar two. We had marked the frame that the two queen cells were left on. When we came back two weeks later, we found one queen cell perfectly opened with a little cap, the other torn down from the middle. So we knew, we, knew we had a viable queen but she still wasn't mated because there was no evidence of eggs. Again, we had to wait. One week later, we came back, hoping to find evidence of a mated queen, and we weren't surprised. She had started to lay up quite a few frames, and we were more than happy at the success of the split. The other hive, which was left in the original position, was flourishing just as well. One important thing to check is the the state of the droppings, varroa, cappings. As you can see, there's a little bit of chalk brood, some legs, but no varroa. 
all looks reasonably healthy. Have a look and see this one too if you want. Mm -hmm.